So it is official that President Biden doesn't want to listen to you. He doesn't want to listen to me. He doesn't even want to listen to his own lawmakers. Yeah, it's true. And I will explain exactly what's going on and give you the full story in just a moment. But first, the reason why he doesn't want to listen is because, according to reports, he is afraid of what could come. This means we could see cuts to things like SNAP benefits. It could be harder for people to go and get them. It could also be harder to actually ensure that Social Security doesn't become insolvent within the next 10 years. But again, this discussion has to happen and President Biden doesn't want to do it. I will explain that in just a second. But first, all I ask is if you can spend two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get right down to it. So we're going to address this story right here. Look at this. It says Republicans reportedly want to ban student loan forgiveness and make it harder to get food stamps in a debt ceiling deal. And they seem to want to do it all over again next year. But why? Why would Republicans even want to do this? What are they thinking? Right? These are the questions we're asking ourselves. Well, here's what I can tell you. Republicans want to sit down with President Biden and hammer out a deal over the debt ceiling. The problem is President Biden does not want to negotiate. He wants a clean deal. But it's very unlikely that this, this even happens. Now, let's go and read this article. So it says right here that House Republican leaders are gearing up to present their ideas to the rest of the party as recess comes to a close. Recess for uh, both the House and the Senate is actually up on April 17th. That's this coming Monday, a day before the uh, your taxes are due. So again, if you haven't done those, make sure you do them now. But it goes on to say that in this debt ceiling package, they would raise the limit until May of 2024. Now, that is a very interesting time frame. Why would we go until May of 2024? Well, according to reports, this is only going to push the debt the debt limit back one year. They're going to raise the debt ceiling, push it back by one year. The expectation is they will get this done in May. That's the reason why. Now, we're going to go through this in just a second, but you can see it right down here, down at the bottom, okay, right here. You can see it, but it says if a deal to raise the limit through May 2024 goes through, it would bring another debt uh, debt ceiling uh, fight just before the presidential election, adding another level of chaos to that cycle. This is not something that anybody wants to do. Nobody wants to go through this again in 2024. However, there's a good chance that we will. Now, Here's something I want to just read to you. So here are some of their, their the things that they're looking at doing. Okay, So they want to raise the limit until May 2024. They're aiming to limit budget growth to 1% annually over the next decade. But in order to do that, you need to ban student loan forgiveness, place work requirements on welfare programs. Okay, So that includes things like, so that would be things like SNAP. Okay. So that would be one of the issues is, okay, well, are we going to have a work requirement here? And if we do, what's it going to look like? Well, this right here is a big question mark. I can't tell you what what's going to happen with this. All I know is that, yes, there are going to be some changes. And a big one right here is they want to rescind unspent COVID funds. I talked about this the other day. And I said that what we are seeing right now is we're seeing some states sending additional relief to their residents because they are worried that if they don't, this money could be gone very soon. And it's because Republicans are trying to claw that money back to go and use it to either pay down some of our debt or pay for other things. So that's very important to understand. They also go on to say in this article, these cuts are not entirely new, that these were actually addressed back in a February memo outlining areas in which they would support cutting spending for a debt ceiling deal. And this is particularly uh, talking about the GOP inside the House of Representatives. Okay, So this article goes on to also say 
that with Congress returning from recess next week, which is April 17th, formal details of a debt ceiling plan are expected after months of stalemate. And this again is one of the reasons why we're coming up with that deadline of May 24. Sorry about my writing, it's just, I have horrible writing, okay? So that's, that's one of the issues there. Um, there we go, May 2024. So, says the U.S. is potentially mere months away from breaching the debt ceiling, meaning it'll be unable to pay for the spending that Congress has already authorized. Okay, that's a big one right there. They had to already authorize it. There's no new spending. This is, let's just get that out of the way. There's no new spending right now. We don't have the money, okay, which is part of the problem. It also says the Congressional Budget Office, they estimate that uh, the breach might come as soon as July. And again, this is why some are saying that if we can come to an agreement sometime in you know, the end of April, this could pass in May, which one year from May 2023 would be May 2024. That gets us to that date right there. Now, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy has said that defaulting on the debt is not an option, but neither is a future of higher taxes higher interest rates in an economy that doesn't work for working Americans. So at the end, it says, uh, and it looks like lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are getting antsy to reach a deal. And they are. They want to get a deal done. They want to get this done as quickly as possible. The only problem is it's taking a while because for one, Republicans haven't even proposed anything. They've given ideas, but no proposals. And two, President Biden does not want to negotiate. He wants a clean deal, a clean debt ceiling, or clean uh, debt increase. That's it. He doesn't want anything else tied to it. But again, we've seen this before where somebody comes out and says, nope, this is our red line. And that red line moves. The expectation is it will in this time, this uh, instance as well. At the end of this article, it says, the consequences of defaulting on the nation's debt would have major financial consequences. This is why I've been telling people, okay, to prep, okay, prep now. You need to prepare because what's going to happen very soon is we are going to see more financial difficulties. And it says right here, okay, it says Moody's Analytics projected that even a short default could lead to 1 million Americans losing their jobs and a mild recession, a mild recession. But get this. Didn't the Federal Reserve just come out yesterday and say that due to the banking crisis, the banking situation we had about a month ago, that the United States is uh, pretty much headed towards a recession between 2022, uh, or actually between uh, uh, Q3 and Q4 okay, of 2023. That's coming up. So that's pretty scary there. Okay, But it goes on to say, a report from the Joint Economic Committee found that a default could cost Americans $20,000 in retirement savings. That's pretty substantial right there because a lot of people have already lost about 50%. It also says private student loan payments would surge. Again, this is not what we want, especially when this is something that, that many lawmakers are trying to figure out. How can they actually forgive this debt? not make your payment surge. And then it goes on to say, and a monthly mortgage payment would increase by $150 a month. That's not what we want. Payments are already going through the roof. They're already so much more expensive. So what I can tell you right now is yes, we are gonna have answers very soon, but where do we go from here? Because I can tell you right now that having uh, getting rid of student loan forgiveness making it harder to get food stamps, okay? And just to get this debt ceiling passed and to do it all over again next year, this is something that Republicans, even though they're proposing or talking about this, the problem is it's going to be very difficult to get Democrats to jump on board. So as we get more information as to what is going on here, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. Again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.